Okay. Okay. Welcome to uh, uh, tonight's Centre of Taiwan Studies uh, seminar. Uh, we, I'm delighted to welcome back uh, Professor uh, Tong Junyuan uh, to give his second lecture uh, in a week. Uh, yesterday we focused on cross-strait relations, Taiwan's um, uh, external relations, and some of the implications of these developments. So to a large extent, uh, yesterday's topic was a term two topic, because in our Taiwan courses we tend to focus on cross-strait relations, international relations, m a political economy in term two. Uh, today we're moving into a term one topic, uh, Taiwan's elections. We tend to kind of focus on comparative politics, elections, party politics, much more in, uh, in term one. So that may uh, reflect why we have slightly larger uh, audience for this um, the term uh, one topic. Um, let me just say a few things about uh, Professor uh, Tong, just for those of you that, that, were, that missed yesterday's talk. Uh, Professor Tong is currently a visiting scholar at uh, University of California, uh, Berkeley. Uh, he's been the director of the Graduate Institute of De uh, Development Studies uh, and also the director of the uh, Prediction Markets Center, at, again at National Jensen uh, University. But he's also someone that cuts um, into practical politics, so he's not just an academic. He's also he served as the um, um, Deputy Minister of the Mainland Affairs Council for uh, two years uh, in the second term, maybe term. So he's got practical experience as well. That's, that was reflected in some of his discussions uh, yesterday. So um, um, let's give uh, Professor Tom a big um, second SOAS uh, welcome. Thank you very much for uh, a very warm welcome and your introduction. It's my great pleasure to be here with you again uh, since I delivered a speech yesterday. But today's topic will focus on current election, but it's very controversial and will be very difficult to predict the election in advance. However, I think a lot of people will be very curious about the outcome of the election and its impact on cultural relations which is quite important to not only to Taiwan people, but also to Chinese people and also around the world. So I try to share my observation with you and sometimes with my personal judgment for you. So today's presentation will be divided into five parts. First one, who is most likely to win the election in Taiwan? Probably most of you can guess. <laughs> then secondly, why is Tsai Ing-wen DPP candidate? So popular in the M2, Zhu Li Run, of the KMT candidate on um, Taiwan's 2016 presidential election. And third, part, we not only focus on presidential election, but next year there will be a legislative UN election to be held uh, at the same time, which will be very important as well in Taiwan, you know, because there is a Congress in Taiwan. So which party or political coalition might become the majority of the general UN? Then both, why is what is President Ma's legacy of cultural relations? Since we would like to discuss the impact of election on cultural relations, so probably we need to explore uh, further what's the legacy of President Ma currently, you know, for the future election. I think most of you have been realized that you know, President Ma just met with uh, President Xi uh, last Saturday. So we need to assess the legacy so that we can try to uh, explore the prospect of cultural relations in the future. So that is my final uh, subject. Who, how will Taiwan's possible winning of Taiwan's election uh, influence cultural relations? So these are five parts uh, I would like to uh, address this afternoon. So who is most likely to win the Taiwan's election? I think most of you probably be uh, aware of the uh, opinion polls in Taiwan. You know, when we try to predict the outcome of elections, probably we can utilize several methods. You know, the most common used method is uh, opinion polls. So you know, we try to uh, do sampling and then we try to uh, do some statistics so that we can understand <coughs> the, the possible outcome of the election. Although these kind of opinion polls might, might create some errors of statistics, but still, this is the most possible outcome in Taiwan. I collect several elections uh, opinion polls. You know, you can see here, including cost trade policy 
uh, Association, CSPA. Uh, TBS is a television uh, station in Taiwan, and Trend is an opinion poll institution in Taiwan. And Taiwan Indicator Survey Research, uh, excuse me, Taiwan Indicator Survey Research, which is uh, also an opinion poll company in Taiwan. And then finally, there's another one, CSPA. Uh, this opinion polls has just been done, you know, a couple of days ago, you know, uh, on uh, November 8th, uh, just, you know, three, three days ago. So you can see Taiwan is in the leading position with a quite huge gap uh, against other two major candidates. You know, so far we have three major candidates, uh, uh, Maiden Tsai Ing-wen and Eric Zhu, Zhu Li-wen, and also Jen Song of the PFP, People First Party. And you know, there's also people did not show their opinions. So you can see uh, Taiwan's approval rating, support rating, was around 45 to 50 percent, even with three <coughs> candidates uh, running in the election. So this is quite clear. You know, Taiwan's in a clean <coughs> position. And in addition, if you look at F2 uh, of the KMT candidates, you can see that F2 average. Uh, support rating was around 20 percent, and James Song declined over time. You know, in the very beginning, James Song announced he will run, uh, he would run the election, and his uh, support rating was around 25, 20 percent. But then afterwards, his support rating continued to decline, and particularly after uh, October, I think this is quite obvious. Uh, James Song's uh, support rating declined very dramatically afterwards. In addition, if we put so-called uh, James Song and uh, F2 support rating together, that can be called so-called Pan Blue Camp. You know, in Taiwan, uh, because of unification and independence issue, usually people will be divided into two camps. You know, Pan, Pan Green Camps and Pan, Pan Blue Camps. So Pan Green Camps is more pro uh, Taiwan independence, and then Pan Blue Camps is more pro unification. On the other hand, Pan Blue Camp excuse me, Pan Green Camp is more pro civil reliance or economy and Pan Blue Camp is more pro uh, in exchanges or cooperations with the Chinese economy. So this is basically a trend in Taiwan. So if we put these two persons together, you can, you can still see that the uh, many high support rating is still higher than the support rating of both of Eric Zhu and James Song. So from this perspective, I think you can see the result might be very obvious. Particularly, uh, Made in Thai support rating has been as high as uh, uh, almost 50%. So after, uh, with the election, I believe with this kind of uh, support rating, Made in Thai might win the majority of uh, total electorate in Taiwan. Then, secondly, uh, sometimes a opinion polls will uh, conduct polls based upon some assumptions. There is probably, you know, James Song, uh, excuse me, th this is another uh, opinion poll to show that who might win the election. So we, we call it optimistic degree uh, uh, for Taiwan's major candidates. Uh, it is surveyed by Coast Trade Party Association. I think it's quite clear the optimistic <coughs> degree for many times to win the election increased gradually. And here now, the, the possibility is around 73.7%. So this is very traditional method to, to gauge the future outcome of Taiwan's election. I think every country uses this kind of methodology. But then for me, I would like to show you another methodology. That is called uh, prediction market. Uh, uh, Professor Fair just mentioned that I'm the director of the Center for Prediction Markets. Prediction market is a futures market operated uh, with a uh, uh, mechanism of prediction market. So people can trade information within the market. So they will contribute the, the information and also their wisdom to gauge, to predict the future so outcome. So you can see that many times might win the election very clearly. You know, uh, in a very recently, around 88% of possibility many times might win the election. And for L2, uh, it was only 11.7%. For 
this is Hong Xiu Chu, you know, currently he stepped down, you know, with the replacement of uh, Edward Chu. But it's quite similar, around 10% only. So basically speaking, you know, based upon our experience, I think this result has shown that uh, the election outcome might be very, uh, very obvious. You know, uh, Taiwan might win the election. So how much force? Excuse me. Uh, is it the same? You know, if we compare Act Two, Taiwan, and James Song. You know, now we put James Song together. You know, James Song's uh, probability to win the election was only one point three percent. So it's quite um, possible, uh, impossible for for James Song to win the election. But how much force? You know, uh, three candidates my my gain garner uh, within the election. For many times, she might garner more than fifty percent. So far, the British market predict you know, many times my uh, my win with fifty-three point four percent of the total force. And for uh, F two, uh, he might win the uh, might win around forty or less than forty percent of total force. For Jim Song, less than ten percent. So this is the prediction of the British market. And then there are two major variables for this kind of prediction in the future. The first variable is China's influence. I think obviously Chinese government would try to influence the result <coughs> for their favorable candidates. Secondly, as I mentioned to you, there might be some possible <coughs> for pan blue camps candidate would integrate and cooperate with each other. So then, uh, or maybe you know, uh, elector might try to uh, figure out which candidate might win the election. So concentrate their force on single candidates. So these are two major uh, variables uh, for the possible outcome in the future. And then, you know, in Taiwan, uh, Taiwan Independent Survey Research also uh, has done some kind of opinion polls on this issue. If, you know. CDP government would not like to see the ruling of the DPP and the winner influence people's thoughts through various approach and even say that the winning of Taiwan will influence cultural relations. I think President Xi uh, mentioned that there would be Di Dong San Yao if there were no so called 92 consensus. So, you know, this might be another uh, factor to influence the, the result. So, you can see if China did impose some pressure <coughs> on Taiwan, then you know, people's uh, foreign behavior might be changed. But uh, unfortunately, not in China's favor, but in opposite uh, direction. Now, without China's influence, uh, many Thai will garner around 35.9%. But with China's influence, or we shall say China's threat, then many Thai will uh, get around 38 percent. Then for uh, Hong Xiu Zhu at that time, he, she will maintain at around uh, less than 20 percent. And for Jim Song, uh, his support rating would decline from 21.6 percent to 18.7 percent. So this kind of lessons has been repeated again and again in the past. You know, in 1995 to 1996, when Chinese government launched military exercise of military threat against Taiwan, uh, and then in 2000, obviously Chinese government's military threat against Taiwan's electorate uh, produced uh, opposite effect or negative effects from Chinese point of view. So this is the first variable we need to observe in the future. And uh, I think Chinese government has more leverage, not only military threat, but they will continue to use so-called economic power to influence Taiwan's election. The other one is about so-called integration among uh, pen group camps. I think it's quite, excuse me, it's quite obvious. You know, even these two candidates uh, integrate and cooperate with, with each other, or uh, elaborate, uh, try to figure out one possible winner and you know concentrate their efforts on one single candidate. It still shows that you know many times might still win with a very majority, uh, uh, with, the, with a big, big gap against uh, the pen blue camps candidate. You know, it shows a similar <coughs> result here. So this might be the result. Then I would like to ask another question. 
why is this kind of result? Why is not KMT uh, in a leading position? Instead, it is uh, Tsai Ing-wen or DPP in a leading position. I think probably we need to understand the current election situation in Taiwan so that you can you know, gauge what would happen in the future. You know, so then I would like to ask the question, why is Tsai Ing-wen <coughs> popular and F2 unpopular in Taiwan? Probably we should look at this situation, this kind of election situation in Taiwan from two perspectives. One from President Ma, the other one from uh, F2. You know, President Ma is not so popular at all in Taiwan at this moment. In terms of leadership, personality, capability, trust, policy, communication, <laughs> coordination, and the implementation, particularly during his second term. I will show you the, the opinion polls result very soon. The, that is why, you know, F2 showed a lot of burdens. Even F2 personally uh, is more popular than uh, President Ma in Taiwan, and even F2 might win a lot of local elections. But, but, I think, you know, uh, President Ma has tracked the election situation for KMT. Instead, compared to F2 and Jim Song, Tsai is more popular in terms of leadership, personality, capability, trust, and policy. So, both two persons need to be responsible for current election strong, uh, election lumps uh, for KMT's. Uh, situation, <coughs> including President Ma and uh, candidate F2. So I will show you some results here. You know, this, this, opinion, this figure is an opinion post conducted by Taiwan Indicator Survey Research. Red one is a confident rating. Orange one is not confidence rating. And black one is a proof of rating. Blue one is, the, is, the, is proof of rating where it's a long-term trend, particularly after the second term here, you can see that uh, non-confidence rating is quite high, constantly, above 60%. Six, and the disproval rating is also quite high, you know, above 70%. I think very few political figures can survive under this kind of opinion polls. But, you know, President Ma is still uh, in a position. Anyhow, uh, we should understand that with this kind of background, I think anyone representing the KMT to run election will have a lot of burden in Taiwan. You know, this is a opinion poll surveyed by Coast Trade Policy Association. It shows a very similar result uh, uh, in August this year. It shows that, you know, uh, for President Ma's confidence rating was only less than 30 percent. Unconfidence rating was above 60 percent. So obviously, a lot of people in Taiwan do not trust President Ma. Needless to say, they are not so satisfied with President Ma. You know, since you would not trust President Ma, Definitely, they would not satisfy with President Ma. So that is quite a serious issue in Taiwan. And then, if you continue to see the approval rating, this approval rating has been conducted by TBS, which is more pro blue camp. We can see that President Ma, at the second term, you know, here is the uh, March uh, 2012, President Ma has experienced negative, or we should say, uh, approval rating deficit quite seriously, you know, about 60 or 50 percent. That is a net approval rating conducted by TBS. It's not a pro, pro uh, pen green camp or pro DBP camp. So obviously, this is quite an objective result. President Ma it, is so unpopular in Taiwan, and uh, his past achievement is not so welcomed by Taiwan's people at this moment. Well, if you compare uh, President Ma's administration and President Chen Shui-bian's administration in a very similar period, you can still see that President Ma's performance is still worse than <coughs> President Chen in a very similar period. So you, you can see in 2008, President Ma won the election with a very big slide. But now you can see 
uh, I think based upon the opinion polls, I think you know most people expect that you know DPP will win with a very uh, big slide. Well, you can also see that you know people in Taiwan uh, expect perceive that President Ma is leading Taiwan into a long direction instead of right direction, particularly after the second term. Well, it's a very magic. Every second term, President Ma seems done everything wrong. But <laughs> anyway, that is the reality in Taiwan. You can see uh, around 46 percent of people, uh, respondent, uh, perceive that President Ma is leading Taiwan into the long direction. Only 30 percent of people uh, believe President Ma is leading Taiwan in the right direction. Well, some other some opinion polls also uh, try to uh, figure out who should be responsible if KMT lost the election. Well, this will, quite, this will create a lot of controversy within KMT if KMT fail the election next January. But then you can see uh, this blue one is, is uh, conducted by TISR, Taiwan Independent Survey Research, and the red one is conducted by Cultural Policy Association. So you can see Hong Xiu Chu at the time. Show me some only 14. 0.5% of respondents uh, say that Hong Xiu Su should be responsible. And then President Ma, 46.7, should be responsible. And Eric Zhu, at the time, chairman of the KMT, should be responsible. So obviously, KMT and Eric Zhu should be responsible for the outcome of possible failure of the KMT election, instead of Hong Xiu Chu. And the similar result has been shown by uh, post trade Policy Association. You can see that only 5.8% believe that Hong Xiu Zhu should be responsible for the outcome. And then 75.8% say that KMT should be responsible. Obviously, President Ma's policy achievement or policy result of President Ma's performance should be responsible majorly. Uh, for the outcome of the election. And then, <clears throat> but it's not only uh, President Ma's responsibility, but also personal responsibility for KMT's candidate should also take some uh, responsibility. So you, we can compare you know, uh, Tsai Ing-wen, Eric Zhu, and James Song's capability. In terms of leadership, in terms of safeguarding Taiwan's interest in dealing cost trade relations, this is quite important particularly in uh, Pen Blue Camp and uh, Pen Green Camp. And trust, policy, visibility, awareness of public opinions. You can see in terms of every aspect, Chairman Tsai is in a leading position, you know, with a very huge amount of support uh, rating. And uh, instead, you know, uh, Eric Zhu and uh, James Song were, uh, are all in a similar uh, approval rating. Okay, now we figure out who might be responsible, but now we also need to uh, pay more attention on the election uh, on the legislative region, region Well, it, I think most people have taken some of the town politics courses here, but anyway, I try to refresh uh, some uh, rules for you. There will be two methods to elect if elect uh, legislators in Taiwan, that is our congressmen in Taiwan. One is 73 will be elected in a geographic constituency using the so-called first pass the poll system. Within a, and in addition, six are elected from two three-member indigenous constituency using a single non-transferable vote system. So these are choose by directly by the voters. Then the other one uh, is the remaining uh, remaining 34 are elected, elected by closest proportional representation in a single national uh, nationwide constituency. You know, yesterday, <coughs> DBB just passed their uh, uh, so-called uh, uh, proportional representative list. So the KMT will do the same thing, and the PAP and some other parties will do the same thing. Here's the current situation in the Legislative Union. <coughs> Totally, there are 113 seats. That is, if you can win 57 seats out of total uh, 113, then you might control the legislative union. Currently, KMT <coughs> has the majority. 
with uh, 65 seats in the legislation. <coughs> DPP control 40 seats. And then here are some uh, minority uh, parties here. <coughs> we, we need to assess the outcome from two perspectives. One is how would people vote for the uh, geographic constituency? The other one is how people will vote for the party candidate <coughs> of so-called proportional uh, representative list. These are support rating of the major party's candidates you know, for a uh, legislator's election. That is, choose a particular person. You can see that uh, mostly, uh, except the TVS uh, survey on um, uh, October uh, 19, DPP has been in a leading position with a very huge uh, gap against KMT and PAP and some other minor, minor parties. So from this perspective, I think DPP might win the majority out of the 73, based upon this opinion polls. And from my understanding, you know, DPP people estimate that uh, DPP might win all the seats in a South 2 union. So obviously, you know, DPP has a lot of confidence, uh, quite competent in this election. Here is the opinion polls show support rating for major parties. There's you know, another uh, proportional uh, representative list. You can see here, DPP are in a you know, uh, front running uh, position, with KMP followed uh, in after DPP, and here are some minor parties. So probably afterwards, you know, because uh, only 5%, only political parties with 5% uh, gain, gain, uh, gaining of the force, can uh, share, well, can, 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 <coughs> can be distributed for the uh, 34 seats of the legislators. Uh, so, basically speaking, probably only DPP, KMT, and Passport, this one, the, the orange one, and Passport, uh, the blue one. The blue one is a new power party. And orange one is PFP, People First Party. My join to, uh, to, 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 to separate all these uh, 34 seats uh, at the election. Well, here's a prediction market result. It shows quite a similar result. Uh, the first share of the major parties <coughs> for the proportional seats of the yen. So basically speaking, uh, PPP might win 50 5.7% of the total, ship, total force. And then the KMT might win more than 30%. But then the rest will win around 5 or less than 5%. Well, here's the total uh, predicted seats of the major party for the pro proportional seats of the United Union. DPP might win at most, uh, currently, 19 seats out of 34. And then KMT will win around 10 seats out of 34. Well, here, is, here are some uh, minor parties' uh, predictions. So the total seats for KMT in the end, uh, here is the prediction uh, based upon uh, prediction market. 48% of probability that KMT might win their seats between a uh, below 45, 45 seats. But after Zhu Lirun, and Zhu became the candidate, you can see the orange line increased very dramatically. This line represents uh, the candidate will win the seats between 45 to 50. So that is, every Zhu might be somehow helpful for their uh, legislators' uh, campaign in the future. But anyhow, still, the candidate might still win around 45 and between 45 to 50, KMT might not win the majority, obviously, in this election. Then for, K for DPP, more than 60% uh, of the probability that DPP will win the majority, between 55 to 60 seats at the end. 
and then 42.7% of probability that, that PPP will win more than 61 seats. That will be a very big victory for, for, for DPP. So <coughs> these are election predictions. Now let's turn to the, the <coughs> post-trade relationship, you know, which you might be more interested in. So as I mentioned to you, what's the legacy for President Ma over the last seven years? Then we can gauge the future prospect uh, based upon the current assessment. So I would like to uh, assess the, the legacy for you. <coughs> I mean speaking, in the past seven years, I think President Ma of my administration has been done very well in terms of maintaining uh, post-trade relations stability and even uh, have signed a lot of uh, agreements with China. You know, both sides signed 23 agreements already with China and both sides have been conducted high level meetings, including recent one, you know, the, the summit meeting between President Ma and President Xi. So it seems very good relationships between Taiwan and mainland China. And also, President Ma has been adopt, adopt <coughs> more open and convenient cultural exchanges. Uh, yesterday I mentioned to you, this year, there will be around 4 million Chinese tourists uh, going to Taiwan. So obviously, you know, this produced some positive results in Taiwan. In addition, I think Taiwan can maintain a very stable diplomatic relations with our diplomatic allies. That is called, uh, so-called diplomatic truce between Taiwan and mainland China. And uh, Taiwan has signed with visa-free agreements with, I think, more than 113 or 114 countries already around the world. And Taiwan signed two economic cooperation agreements with New Zealand and Singapore with some kind of you know, tacit consent from China so that we can uh, sign these agreements with Singapore and New Zealand where these are concrete achievements uh, made by President Ma. And also, Taiwan participated in the World Health Assembly as a special observer. You know, we, our observership has not been uh, passed in an assembly, but you know, uh, uh, WTO director invited us as a special observer to attend the assembly. Then ICAO also, uh, situation is quite similar. ICAO director also invited Taiwan to attend the, the meeting as a special guest. Well, this is a special arrangement. So these are all concrete policy achievements you know, made by President Ma over the last seven years. However, however I would like to still emphasize one thing. You know, particularly, this is a quite critical issue. Uh, which has been emphasized in the uh, Xi, Ma Xi Hui, uh, Ma, President Ma and Xi Jinping summit uh, just a couple of days ago, the so-called 92 consensus. In the very beginning, President Ma prepared a part of the statement. He mentioned that both sides reach a common understanding on so-called one China principle, which is called 92 consensus. And that is a public statement. But in Taiwan, he said, no, the so-called NATO consensus is one China with different interpretation. The so-called different interpretation referred to one China is Republic China. I think most of you can, uh, can uh, understand this kind of statement made by President Ma. However, from China's point of view, there is no such thing. Chinese government always say both sides reached one China principle in 1992, period. No such different interpretation. So I would call it the foundation, political foundation for both sides to interact and to build consensus over the last seven years. It's not so-called 92 consensus, but 92 consensus with different interpretation. Or we can call it zero eight consensus. 92 consensus with different interpretation. You know, from China's point of view, it's one China principle only. But for Taiwan, it's one China, but with different interpretation. I think this creates some ambiguity for both sides to interact. You know, from China's point of view, they would like to insist on so-called one China principle. But from Taiwan's point of view, we can accept the so-called one China principle in which there's only one China and the PRC represent China. So we try to create this kind of 
a maneuvering space for Taiwan, you know, based upon President Ma's uh, statement. However, however, you can see that there is still some differences for both sides' interpretation on the so-called 92 consensus. That is, this foundation is quite fragile. This foundation just put aside so-called disputes and seek common ground, you know, to uh, continue to negotiate and, and interact with each other. This is a, a very unusual arrangement, but probably useful at this moment for both sides to inter interact with each other. However, this has created very serious controversy in Taiwan. You know, from DPP point of view, or Chairman Tsai's point of view, there is no such consensus called 92 consensus. In 92, both sides did not sign any concrete papers or documents which stated what is 92 consensus. During the process, where there, be, there might be some basic understanding, but there is not very clear meaning of the consensus. Where then Chinese government say both sides have been upholding so-called one China principle. That is a consensus reached in 92. Then from the point of view, it says that there is consensus, but the consensus refers to one China with different interpretation. Okay. So this this is quite complicated and uh, you know delicate in the in the process. However, they say if President Ma has done a lot of achievements in the past in terms of cultural relationship. So the approval rating for his policy should be very good. But now you can see these uh, opinion polls approval rating has been done by TBS uh, majorly and with some other opinion, opinion polls uh, including uh, Taiwan Brain Trust and DBP and TBS and Wang Day. You can see President Mars even he is so proud of his uh, cost trade policy achievement, his cost trade policy uh, performance, but still, he continued to experience, you know, negative or deficit of his approval rating on cost trade policies around thirty percent, around thirty percent. So there is a lot of people still not so satisfied with President Ma in with regard to cost trade policy. But President Ma is so proud, so proud of his, himself. Well, I try to figure out, I try to provide some personal uh, observation why President Ma is, is not so popular. He is not, he, he did, did not get so much approval rating uh, with respect to cultural relations. I would say there are six imbalances for President Ma's policy toward China. First one, power position versus cost trade consensus. Second, economic security versus cost trade economic integration. Third, public interest versus enterprise interest. Fourth, Taiwan's international participation versus cost trade reconciliation. And fifth, democratic supervision versus cost trade negotiation, including not only you know straight change foundation uh, with uh, our uh, association of course Taiwan trade, and uh, also KMTCCB forum regularly held uh, every year. And six, political, political talks versus functional negotiation. I will explain the details uh, afterwards. Well, first, the current position versus cost trade consensus. I think President Ma tried to integrate with China based upon so called common consensus with China. Well, although the consensus I, I just mentioned to you, explained to you, is quite fragile, but still, uh, both sides, you know, both governments in in occurs to Taiwan's trade, believe they have some common consensus. But people in Taiwan has quite different, different views on the consensus. President Ma mentioned that both sides belong to one China. Also, this is a position you know, held by Chinese government. Only when this is a opinion poll done in April uh, 2013, this red one is done in, uh, in May 2014. Obviously, very few people, or less than 30% of people now, believe that both sides belong to one China, only 26.8%. It climbed further. And then more people believe that both sides do not belong to one China. Uh, last year, this 
the number has been jumped to 61. And then how to define cultural relationship? You know, from gender point of view, it should be internal or domestic relationship. But from our public opinion polls, which shows that only 25% of people believe that cultural relationship is non-state to state relationship. And then more than around 60% of people responded, uh, perceive that cultural relations is state to state uh, relationship. Of course, we cannot just follow or implement policy based upon Taiwan's opinion polls. But still, we can see there is a huge gap between Britain Ma's perception of Britain Ma's position versus uh, domestic public opinion polls. So there is quite a serious problem. If you have a very diver diverging view between the government and the public, then your policy would not be sustainable and you would not gain a, uh, su sufficient support from the public. In addition, I try to calculate the so-called index of Taiwan identity the so-called index of Taiwan identity equals to Taiwanese identity minus Chinese identity. You know, this, uh, this opinion policy has been surveyed by uh, Election Studies Center in National Center University. After President Ma was elected, you can see the trend has been rising even more rapidly compared to the previous period under President Chen shui administration. Now, the index has uh, jumped to uh, 55.7. Before President Ma uh, assumed his office, there was 38% only. And then more people continue to support independence. So this is called Index of Post Trade Unification and Independence between 1994 to 2015. You can see after 2008, still negative 10 percentage of people support independence, more than uh, supporting unification. So it, it is quite obvious, after 2008, the, the, the index maintained up in a very negative trend. I think the Chinese government was so annoyed and then so uh, furious about this kind of situation. We have done a lot of things to Taiwanese people, but why Taiwanese people uh, respond in this way? support Taiwan independence, uh, you know, identify themselves as only Taiwanese, not Chinese, not immigration. So I think the Chinese government are so annoyed with this kind of trend. And here is the opposing uh, immigration index. It's a similar result. People would not support immigration. Instead, they would like to maintain the Republic of China on Taiwan as a status quo. <coughs> he, here is the opinion poll to show President Ma's position versus public position. You know, most people perceive President Ma is more pro unification, uh, more than 20%. And then the public perceive themselves as more pro Taiwan independence. The, the index was uh, minus uh, negative 14.7%. So there is a very huge gap between the public and President Ma's uh, position, around you know, 35%. So this creates a lot of tension, creates create a lot of uh, um, you know, this move for, uh, from public perspective. Well, <clears throat> this example is more obvious to show that President Ma's position is more for China, particularly after the second term. You know, in the very beginning, most people maintain that you know, President Ma is maintain a very central, uh, centrist way to conduct our relations with China. But in the, the second term, I think most people say that Britain Ma is more pro-China. Very obvious. You know, more than 60% of people perceive Britain Ma is more pro-China. Only less than 30% of people uh, responded perceive Britain Ma is uh, or disagree this kind of statement. <clears throat> the second imbalance is that uh, you cannot screw versus cultural economic question. As I mentioned to you, President Ma advocate. You know, Taiwan needs to integrate with China's economy so that we benefit econo economy, uh, economically and also we can benefit from Taiwan's uh, participation in regional economic integration. However, very people support this kind of situation. You know, uh, here is the opinion to show Taiwan people attitude toward cost-free agreements in service trade. 
which has been signed by both sides in June 2013. Most people do not support this kind of agreement. And most people perceive that the, the effect of post trade agreement in service trade would be uh, more cost than benefit. You can see this one, cost bigger than uh, benefit for cost trade agreement in service trade. Not only in terms of economy, but also in terms of security and sovereignty. 50% of people responded, perceived that cost of cost trade uh, agreement in service trade will be uh, bigger than the benefit in terms of security and sovereignty. But President Ma did not say so. He mentioned that this will create positive impact, positive, positive benefit for Taiwan's economy as well as our national security and also our diplomatic games. Well, third is regarding income distribution. Public interest versus enterprise interest. Well, most people perceive that cost rate economic agreements did not be help, uh, are not helpful for Taiwan's uh, economy. So you can see here, around 50% of people of this London uh, say that, you know, at far, the effects of cost rate economic cooperation agreement are not helpful for Taiwan's economy. Only 23.9% uh, agree. Here is the uh, cost rate policy effects. Now, most people perceive that, perceive that uh, currently, President Ma's policy toward China, economic policy toward China, would be uh, harmful for Taiwan's economy. You can see very clearly the, the green one. Only less than 20% at this moment perceive cost rate economic policy would be helpful for Taiwan's economy. And then people also perceive that China, uh, China will benefit more than Taiwan in terms of cultural economic changes. You can see here, China benefit more, and uh, particularly, you know, most people perceive that Taiwan's investment in China will benefit China instead of Taiwan. So obviously, people did not see benefit result of this kind of cultural economic changes, at least from their perception. In addition, most people perceive that cultural economic changes will create a lot of uh, benefit which will be <coughs> shared by only large enterprises in Taiwan. That is, President Ma is doing something favorable to large enterprises, but will create negative things for common people. That is, you know, blue color, labor, and farmers, and fishermen. So these people will show the cost of cultural economic changes, and these people will have its benefit of cultural economic changes. That is why you know, people have a very uh, you know, um, obvious perception. President Ma is more close to large tycoons in Taiwan, and particularly this tycoon has a company, Lian Zhan or Wu Boxiong, you know, uh, went to China and uh, you know, engaged in a negotiation or meeting with the CCP in China. So this creates a very negative uh, image for the KMT. In addition, you know, President Ma also mentioned that as long as post trade relations have been reconciled with each other, then you know, China will, have, will let Taiwan have more international space. However, you know, people in Taiwan do not see this kind of full way gesture uh, from China. You know, here is a opinion post uh, released by the Manifest Council to show uh, Taiwan, Taiwan's perception of Chinese government's unfriendliness uh, um, uh, opinion post. So, over the last seven years, this trend has not been changed very significantly. Almost maintained the, the, the same trend compared to President Chen Zhuibin's period, even sometimes higher than Chen Zhuibin's period. So obviously, people did not uh, sense this kind of benefit. Well, here's a proof already for President Ma's foreign policy. Even, even foreign policy. See, uh, most people disapprove President Ma's policy performance, you know, with 56%, you know, recently disapprove uh, President Ma's policy, only 31% uh, approve President Ma's policy. So, as long 
as I mentioned to you, you know, these cost trade relations has created a lot of uh, income distribution and also create a lot of concern on security and sovereignty. So generally speaking, you know, people hope the Congress should be supervised the process and then the process of negotiation should be more transparent. However, based upon opinion polls, you know, most people did not perceive it this way. 82% of people perceive that you know, the negotiation or interaction between Taiwan and China uh, is not trans transparent enough. And then 55% you know, of people uh, perceive that you know, the, the decision making in Taiwan on cultural relations has, has not been supervised adequately by the Congress. So it would be very difficult to resolve political disputes within Taiwan and mainland China if there is no political dialogues or political talks or political negotiation office. In addition, without political talks, then it will be more difficult for people to continue to support current negotiation. I think people will ask what will be next step for Taiwan and China to invest in the future. So this will undermine people's confidence and the support for the deepening cost trade relations in the future. But President Ma always mentioned that there is no consensus in Taiwan. So Taiwan should not implement political negotiation with China. That's correct. However, he did not mention one thing. People is not so confident in President Ma. This also created another situation. Uh, President Ma would not negotiate with China. He has a confident rating of the KMT administration to set up how much interest in cost trade negotiations. Let me also give you one, another example. You know, before Ma Xihui, President Ma and Xi Jinping summit, you know, several opinion polls shows that around 60% of people support, you know, high day for summit, you know, leader, leaders summit between Taiwan and mainland China. But only 40, I think 43 or 45% of people support Ma Xihui. You can see again between these two, that is, you know, people have less confidence in President Ma. Uh, compared to regular, you know, summit. Well, finally, I would like to share with you my observation on how we are Taiwan part of winning uh, to influence uh, cultural relations. I think I almost run out of time, but I will try to, you know, uh, specify my arguments. First, we need we need to look at you know Taiwan and the uh, Julian's position so that we can you know elaborate the the possible outcome. Well, uh, Chairman Tsai's position is that she would have to maintain the status quo of first time trade as a fundamental principle, policy goal, and goal uh, of the DPP administration. So this is the first thing uh, Chairman Tsai uh, uh, said in April. Then in April, he, he, she mentioned that she would have to continue to advance peaceful development of cultural relations under the constitution order of the Republic of China and according to general public opinions. This statement has been stated in the United States in June, and then recently in up, uh, October, it could mention that there are two core elements of the maintaining status quo. Maintaining Taiwan's freedom and democracy, she tried to define status quo, because many people, particularly KMT uh, candidates, uh, has uh, questioned uh, Chairman Tsai's of, uh, definition of status quo. So one of them is that maintaining uh, maintaining Taiwan's freedom and democracy and the existing constitutional order, as well as safeguard uh, peaceful and stable development of cultural relations. So these are three elements of Chairman Tsai's policy toward China. Then, uh, Eric Chu's position, honestly speaking, is not quite clear yet, you know, because he did not uh, elaborate on his policy toward China in a very comprehensive way. However, based upon some uh, uh, reports uh, released by media. I figure that, you know, first, he would have to maintain the position that many consensus of one China with different interpretation. That is one key point. He always used these uh, as a key elements to question uh, Chairman Tsai. Secondly, both sides belong to one China, which he stated in front of Xi Jinping in May this year. But this probably is a little different from current situation. By Nikhao, uh, I think these two elements are uh, major components of uh, Eric Zhu's position. Well, his opinion poll to show that uh, more people still believe uh, 
you know, Truman's highest uh, cultural policy. Well, this has been done in uh, June by Cultural Policy Association. 63% uh, of respondents supported you know, uh, Truman's highest position on cultural relations. Only for, excuse me, uh, 31 support Ong Xiu Zhu. And then 44.7% of people support that Chairman Tsai will safeguard Taiwan's use uh, in dealing Taiwan's relations with China. Only 31 uh, believe in uh, Ong Xiu Zhu. Well, Tsai will mention that she would conduct Taiwan's relations with China under the constitution order and according to the general public means, then whether people will believe in this kind of statement. In June, only, I think, let around 37% of people believe, but 43% 43 of people did not believe. But now, more people believe in Thai than people not believing. Well, here is the index to maintain the status quo. Obviously, you know, most people in Taiwan would have to maintain the status quo. So now, the controversy will be how to define the status quo. You know, as I mentioned to you, Chairman Tsai defined us maintaining the freedom and the democracy in Taiwan, as well as maintaining peaceful development. Of course, that's straight. Uh, so you can see most people is called maintaining the status quo. There is a status quo incarnation of cultural policy of Tsai and Hong Xiu in conducted in July this year. You know, 54% of people uh, believe Taiwan's policy will maintain the status quo. Instead, most people believe that you know, Hong Xiu will change the status quo. Well, maybe you know, Zhu Lirun used this as an excuse to express uh, uh, Hong Xiu mm -hmm. But anyhow, most people still believe that you know, Taiwan will follow her promise to maintain the status quo. Well, in addition, we not only to maintain peace and stability of the Strait. In addition, you know, more people will uh, more care, will be more care about which one, which candidate will set up challenges in dealing with cultural relations. You can see that you know, uh, more people uh, support Taiwan when we uh, do a better job compared to Act 2 of James So. It's quite obvious. Okay, now in the future, a lot of people has give mandates to the new administration and also Taiwan to proceed political di dialogues with mainland China and also negotiate a new initiative to replace 92 consensus. So how will Taiwan's willing to in influence cultural relations? My overall judgment is that well, peace and the stability of the Trail will be maintained. I would I would like to explain later. Second, continual di uh, bilateral official exchange and negotiation will depend on implicit negotiation result with a tacit mediation of the United States, particularly in the wake of the presidential election and prior to Taiwan's inauguration in May next year. Second, third, cultural, economic, and social exchange will, will continue with minor impact of China's possible international sanctions, such as reducing Chinese tourist or investment to Taiwan. The Chinese government can control uh, this kind of exchanges between Taiwan and mainland China. And fourth, the romantic confrontation between Taiwan and mainland China might intensify and worsen, you know, because of China's policy change. Why I come to this agreement, uh, this uh, conclusion? First, if we look at Xi Jinping's past priority, it is quite obvious that first, for Xi Jinping, is to avoid any de jure Taiwan independence. But which is impossible in Taiwan, given Taiwan's uh, mainstream public opinions and, uh, and Taiwan's past commitment. Second, I think Xi Jinping would like to ma maintain peace and stability so that he can put all his efforts to solve and uh, resolve the domestic issue. And third, I think also Xi Jinping would like to avoid any impression or resolve of China's policy failures of the past 14 years since 2002. The, particularly during the Xi Jinping's era. So this is quite a serious challenge for Xi Jinping. He would not only maintain peace and stability, but also he need to avoid this kind of impression on the result of the past failures. You know, because Hu Jintao established the so-called uh, peaceful framework of interaction between Taiwan and mainland China. But now, if Chairman Tsai win the election and say something about Taiwan independence, then you will face a lot of challenges within China. 
And fourth, Jinping will continue to uh, maintain bilateral official changes only with political preconditions. That is NATO consensus. And finally, Xi Jinping also would have to conduct political dialogues to advance unification. But therefore, Taiwan, I think Taiwan will avoid China, China's military annexation, <laughs> but I think which is also uh, quite impossible given China's priority on the next issue and intention of China. So this is uh, we can do out of uh, this kind of uh, situation. Second, Taiwan also would like to maintain peace and stability to focus on Taiwan's domestic development and assure its allies' interests in the region, including the United States and also the United Kingdom. And third, he would like to maintain bilateral official exchanges and negotiations without any preconditions. So obviously, there is some, some kind of uh, controversy between Taiwan and the Xi on this issue. It's almost the same. Uh, Taiwan would like to conduct bilateral talks without any preconditions uh, to resolve political disputes without any preconditions. So it's obviously uh, priority three and priority four. There are some uh, controversy or disagreement between China and the sea. So uh, next, you know, Taiwan close, closes China's bottom line to declare dual independence. Otherwise, I don't think China will resort to the military means to resolve the, some of the issue of the Taiwan's trade. And second, I think peace and stability will be maintained if Tsai elected, since Tsai has been strongly committed to maintaining the status quo. Of course, I think currently, you know, Chinese government will pressure Tsai to clarify what's the definition of the status quo. So Chinese government, through all possible means, will pressure Tsai to clarify the meaning and measures to maintain the status quo and what is the meaning of the constitutional orders of the Republic of China. You know, President Ma mentioned that the so-called uh, constitution referred to one China uh, in essence. So, but from Chairman Tsai's point of view, probably it will be different interpretation. Well, here's the definition and basis of post relations uh, based upon uh, opinion polls. Obviously, most people would not support so-called uh, invocation with China, but most people support so-called one country on each side. That's the definition based upon present term. And also people would like to support uh, a fair cultural relationship based upon ROC, Republic of China Constitution orders. Or oh, one China, one Taiwan. Or oh, no education, no independence, no force. So this is the position advocated by President Ma at this moment. So obviously, these are major positions Taiwan's people will support. And Truman Tsai uh, asserts his position with more than 69% of people supporting. So obviously, this, he, uh, her position uh, has a majority of public supporting in Taiwan. Well, this has been the similar result. I will not uh, repeat again. But uh, to avoid the result impression of CGP policy failure for Taiwan, I think the Chinese government at this moment and in the future will exert political pressure such as disrupting cultural dialogues, imposing economic sanctions and diplomatic sanctions against Taiwan to Chairman Tsai to accept so-called negative consensus and or to negotiate a new case of consensus acceptable to both sides uh, across time strength. I think it is quite possible for both sides to reach a tacit agreement or consensus uh, to maintain peace and stability because China has been very realistic or to some degree pragmatic in terms of its overall policy approach toward Taiwan since 1979, you can see, particularly in 95, 96, in 2000, Chinese government always threatened to, to Taiwan. And then afterwards, Chinese government affirmed its policy or changed its policy approach to the administration. Even in 2004, Chinese government has been negotiating with the Chinese administration uh, in very high level uh, with uh, Director General level officials. So in the future, I think Tsai's Chai Chai job uh, as Taiwan's next president is challenging to, to rebalance the six imbalance, uh, as I mentioned to you, uh, and in the back job of the increasing Taiwan identity and also increasing a certain China of rapidly uh, rising power. So the most important job for President, uh, for Chairman Tsai, uh, close relation is to force the domestic consensus, which is satisfied with the domestic public, public and supported by international power, particularly the United States, and also tolerated and acceptable to China. 
This is not quite easy job. These figures. This is the relative scale of major power GDP in Asia Pacific region. The, the blue line is uh, relative power between US to China. The red one is US plus Japan to China. You can see in the late 1980s, US plus China's relative power is 27.1 times of China's. But now it's only 2.1 times. So obviously, China's rising power has changed the power balance. Here is the balance between Taiwan and mainland China. In 1992, China's GDP was only 1.9 times of Taiwan's GDP. But right now, last year, it's 19.6. So I would say this is very uh, change, staggering job as a president in Taiwan. Thank you. I will stop here. <laughs>
um, Prison Mars Party uh, performers in the past. You know, in 2008, actually, Frank Xie also faced a very similar situation, you know, uh, with uh, Zhu Liren, Eric Zhu. At the time, I think Frank Xie also tried to keep some differences uh, between his position and the uh, president's position. However, I think people will not differentiate these two positions. So probably, I think Frank, uh, Eric Zhu should be more frank. Um, the current policy poverty towards China and try to persuade people, you know, we have changed uh, in the future. We will, be, we will change in the future so that, you know, probably they can persuade people to support KMT between the Legion election. If under the current situation, I think KMT would lose the majority of the Legion and even some people are quite pessimistic. You know, a KMT might just win 30 something of seats in a legislation. That, that is, you know, the DPP will control uh, absolutely the, the legislation. And this will cause a very devastating uh, impact on KMT in the future. Okay. Um, questions? <coughs> oh, yeah. Uh, Christian. Um, I have two questions. First, if you go to the first presentation, uh, to the first slide. Uh, first slide? The first slide, the very first one. Oh, okay. Uh, with the graphic. Ah. Yes, uh, where's the first graphic? Uh, uh, this one? The, yeah, yeah. Because I'm wondering, I would like to know what's happened between the second and the third uh -huh. uh, polling. Because here, Chung Sung lost 10% and then stayed 10% lower. So what's happened? Which one? What's <laughs> happened between this poll and this poll? Because here it comes down 10% and then mm. stays low. Yes. So I'm asking, I want to ask what is happening. between. Okay. Uh, and the second one is uh, how big are the, uh, the poll? How many people you interview for that? 500, 1,000, 300? And are they concentrated in a specific area? Because despite we do academic work, there's also a financial aspect. We cannot go over the whole country to ask people. So yeah. first the sample of it. Okay. And if the be try to put the net over the whole island, or was it because mm. of okay. resources? Well, it, it's a very common practice in Taiwan to start being imposed. Uh, major, uh, generally speaking, the sample size will be around 1,000. Mm -hmm. 1,000 okay. samples good. through good. Uh, random selecting of the samples mm -hmm. uh, based upon the so-called te telephone lines mm -hmm. in Taiwan. Although I think this would also have some bias mm -hmm. uh, based upon uh, the, the current sampling techniques. Uh, secondly, you, you mentioned that you know TBS situation has shown that you know uh, L2's uh, supporting rate was a higher 39 and then declined to 26.7. I'm not quite sure what happened to this one. I'm speaking, you know, because okay. most uh, opinion polls shows that uh, th this decline very rapidly uh, around 30 or then 30s, but this increased dramatically. Uh, sometimes. There are some so-called institutional bias. Uh, no, I thought maybe there was a political blunder or something of the candidate. No, no. You know? So this is I why it went see, down. Yeah, I did not see any particular events or political incidents in Taiwan uh, okay. at this period. So we can see the trend, but I don't think this will represent the absolute uh, situation or reality in Taiwan. Oh, no, no, no. Okay. Yeah. But, but it's a trend. And yeah, we also it see the trend. It went down and stayed yeah. down. Yeah. 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 So probably the best one is to compare the first and the last. <laughs> you know, these, 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 the same organization. Yeah, yeah it's okay. the same organization. Oh, right. So, uh, L2 is supporting the decline from 35.7 to almost 30%. Uh, okay. So, it declined by 5%. So, generally speaking, uh, you know, people okay. might feel uh, fair new yeah. when uh, uh, L2 represent came the candidate, but now, finally, uh, people realize that it did not change so much. Sorry, can I add one yeah, to it? Because this is our strength, our strength. Uh, until 20 years ago, the polling was more or less correct with the result. Since then, the polling before election and mm -hmm. compared with the result became very mm -hmm. different. How yeah. is this in Taiwan? Well, uh, I need to tell you two things. First, 10 days before election, it would not allow to publicize your poll. Mm -hmm. 
the, this is regulated by the Central Com uh, Election Commission in Taiwan. No, no, I mean, uh, could be wrong. 20 years ago, or I have to say 10 or 20 years ago, they was more mm -hmm. exact with the outcome yes. uh, than now. So, so essentially, are Taiwan polls getting better? Yeah. <laughs> or well, I'm not <laughs> doing this kind of research. <laughs> However, I think, you know, uh, opinion polls usually show the underestimate of support rating for DPP or opposition party, uh -huh. usually, mm -hmm. by 10 percentage. Usually by 10 percent each. So if you look at this kind of situation, you know, the Green candidate, uh, the DPP candidate, uh, has so high support in rating, you know, it will be very, very possible. You know, DPP will win the majority. Yeah. Okay. In Taiwan. But in another place, I would have challenged mm -hmm. Professor uh, Tom there on was on some of the uh, the figures, for example, for the small parties. Mm -hmm. I know the polls completely missed the small parties. Mm -hmm in 2012. Mm -hmm. um, so I think we always need to uh, kind of take this with a bit of a uh, mm -hmm. caution. Yes. And, and, and similarly, if we look at the 2014 elections, mm -hmm. the, uh, the polls made a lot of mistakes in some of the... 10 days before the election. Right. But then the 10 days, it would be very big uh, change. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay, some more questions. Oh, ah, yeah. Uh, yeah. Go on, yeah. yeah. So if we suppose that Simon gets elected, you said in, in implementing a cross-trade approach, you said she has to not only take care of domestic policies, but also look at China and, and look at the United States. So given this complexity, how likely do you think it is that her approach towards cross-trade relations will disappoint voters? Dis disappoint? Disappoint. disappoint. Mm -hmm. Because of the complexity of this issue, because of entrenched mm -hmm. interests. Right? With a new game, you know, for Taiwan and Xi Jinping and, you know, uh, and the United States, and the United States will also have an election next year. You know, probably Hillary Clinton might win election. So they, this will be new game. So uh, three sides will try to figure out their possible policy principles, uh, prefer uh, preferences. So far, I think the United States has been comfortable and confident, confident uh, in Taiwan's policy approach to China. You know, in 2012, I think the United States showed some disapproval. Uh, with Taiwan by saying that you know Taiwan's policy is not clear and might change the status quo. But this time, I think the United States has kept a very, very neutral position uh, between KMT and DVP and between Taiwan and China. China. And afterwards, if Taiwan can continue insist on so-called maintaining status quo based upon the whole constitution order of the Republic of China, I think possibly Three sides might be satisfied. But I think the Chinese government will try to uh, pay more attention on the definition of the cultural relations. I think the Chinese government worry that Taiwan's definition on cultural relations is state to state relations. If if Chairman Tsai try to maintain a very low profile on this issue and even try to define cultural relations as spatial relations instead of you know, state to state or internal or domestic relations. I think you know, Ch Chinese government would be tolerate. Uh, would, would tolerate this kind of definition. Even China tolerate this kind of definition, but I don't think Chinese government would uh, proceed negotiation with Chairman Tsai. If Chairman Tsai did not uh, would not uh, provide some elements of one China to China uh, to the Chinese government, then I don't think the Chinese government would uh, give green light. Uh, to Chairman Tsai to maintain uh, cultural dialogues. Okay, yeah, uh, hello, uh, thank you very much. And actually, I have two questions. Yeah, and the course. first one is about uh, diplomatic truth. And uh -huh. so far, we know it's based mm -hmm. on upon the 1992 consensus. However, as you mentioned, okay, maybe mm -hmm. the BPP will have another new test is consensus with, uh, with Beijing. But before reaching a new consensus, would you predict or would you see that there would be kind of a domino effect of uh, the decrease of Taiwan's allies, allies or you think that so Beijing will basically maintain the same policy towards Taiwan between 2000 to 2002, <coughs> as you mentioned about uh, listening to what Taipei says and watching what Taipei mm -hmm. has. That's uh, my first question. And the second one is about the economic integration. Is that um, uh, some political theories always say there would, would definitely be kind of a spillover effect. And 
do you think that will that still be kind of inevitable for the GDP to have a political dialogue with the Beijing? If uh, I, I mean the premise is based on we we don't hope to cause cross gender non integration directly. Thank you. I'm not quite understand your second question, but I, I try to explain to you. You mean uh, if this kind of economic changes will produce political dialogues between Taiwan and China? Yeah, because it kind of spill over that. If okay. we mention about peace agreement, for example. Uh, well, for your first question, I think Chinese government would continue would exert tremendous pressures on Taiwan, uh, where I'm made in Thai, uh, in economic perspective and also diplomatic front. So possibly, I think several allies will savor their relations with Taiwan if Chairman Tsai win the election. Before both sides reach a new tacit agreement or consensus. You know, I think this is a two-stage or maybe three-stage uh, game between Taiwan and mainland China. Currently, it's the first stage during the election. I think the Chinese government tried to undermine supporting rate, support ratings for Chairman Tsai. So that in the future, Chairman Tsai will have less leverage of bargaining chips against China. So obviously, the Chinese government will not talk to you, will not engage or you know, contact with you before the election. Because it would, China would, would have to show to the public in Taiwan that if China will win the election, then it will be so called Di Dong San Yao. You know, <laughs> where we will be upside down of relations between Taiwan and mainland China. So then, you know, people might worry the, the, the result of the election, so they might, you know, change their support from uh, Chen Wen Tsai to Ed Zhu or James Song. So obviously, China is doing the game, this kind of game at this moment. But then secondly, if Tsai really win the election, then it will end to the second, second stage. You know, China's government will impose sanctions against Taiwan. So they, you know, put real pressure on the uh, new administration in Taiwan. You know, if, if there is no very quick or fast agreement between Taiwan and mainland China uh, after uh, uh, Taiwan's winning, then you know, this kind of situation will continue to uh, occur for a very short period of time until, until you know, Chairman Tsai do something bad to China in her inauguration you know, speech. And I believe the United States and China and Taiwan will try to um, to conclude some tacit agreements or consensus to maintain peace and you know, stability of the time threat. Otherwise, I think Xi Jinping will also face very tremendous pressure within China. You know, if Taiwan continue his her position on so-called Taiwan independence, then you know I think Xi Jinping will be criticized very severely within China. So both sides are play, playing these kind of two uh, two level games within a two stage. Then the third stage is after the you know you know relation speech uh, speech period. That is after that if Tsai did, did not, uh, would not promise China something, or would not make some political concession to China uh, in terms of one China principle or in terms of one China concept, then I think Chinese government would, would maintain a so-called wait and see approach uh, toward Taiwan. But on the other hand, I think Chinese government will continue to utilize their political uh, pressure to exert political pressure by gaining more allies from Taiwan. But honestly speaking, this has been a uh, planning game between Taiwan and mainland China for the last 40 years already. As most people in Taiwan are not so concerned about our diplomatic allies number, it is just a symbolic issue in Taiwan. The most important issue for Taiwan is our relations with the United States, with Japan, with UK or European countries. Because these countries will uh, provide support for Taiwan in international participation and even to safeguard Taiwan's security in the Taiwan Strait. So probably I think you know, people will, um, will, will be more understanding for the, the situation afterwards. Okay. Yes, go ahead. Um, Thank you for your talk. Um, one of the reasons that Mao Zedong was elected in 2008 was because like uh, the cross-strait relationship was really bad under uh, the rule of Chen Shui-bian, and like Taiwan's international participation was really suppressed by China. So that was one of the reasons that Mao was elected. Uh -huh. And uh, like 
one of the policies Tsai uh, Tsai Ing-wen she proposed was that she wants to increase Taiwan's international participation by like um, setting up NGO centers in Taiwan and like increasing Taiwan's presence in the international community. Yes. Do you think like China will suppress that as badly as with Chen Shui Bian? Well, after 2008, uh, we did not see that Chinese government lift pressures on Taiwan's uh, presence on international NGO. You know, actually, my friends in the uh, Ministry of Foreign Affairs told me that Chinese government even uh, utilized more uh, pressure to, uh, to, you know, to object to Taiwan's presence in an international IG, uh, INGO. In 2008, maybe I, I should ex explain a little bit about the 2000 election. You know, in 2000 elections, I think a lot of people really are concerned about cultural relations. But at that time, more people are more concerned about corruption issue of the present term at that time. So probably this is a major reason why so many people sweeped uh, their support from traditional DPP to the KMT. But secondly, you know, people are more concerned about the economic prospect. If, you know, I think at that time, most people believe that Ma Ying Jiu will improve Taiwan's economy significantly. Mm -hmm. And also, uh, Ma Ying Jiu invited uh, Vincent Xiao, uh, Xiao Wanchang, as uh, his running, running man. So obviously, you know, uh, people expect that uh, Ma Ying Jiu will improve Taiwan's economic prospect dramatically. But third, it's about cultural relations stability. I think stability is a preference of Taiwan's people, but it's not quite uh, important to Taiwan's people, or it's, it's, it's not a very top priority for Taiwan's people. You know, because at this moment, there's no war or military conflict uh, in Taiwan's trade. So people cannot very clearly uh, or obviously sense this kind of urgency to maintain so-called stability and peace for Taiwan's trade. So in 2008, I think most people pay more attention to uh, economic issue and corruption issue, not to only cultural issue. You can look at 2012 election again. You can see that in 2012, around 5.7% of people support President Ma because of cultural relationship to maintain stability and peace, and most importantly, to, to improve Taiwan's economy. So that is, you know, cultural reconciliation will, will uh, create so-called peaceful dividend, peace dividend uh, for Taiwanese people. So at that time, you know, people support President Ma uh, for uh, running a re-election. But right now, you know, if KMT can only bring peace and stability, then I don't think, you know, this is sufficient for people to choose KMT, you know, without, you know, promising more uh, benefit or economic development in Taiwan. So that is my observation. Okay, you have a, a question there, the side, yeah. <coughs> Sorry, um, you, mentioned, you mentioned earlier that a lot of dialogues, they have a lot of gains and tools to use as wagers. And um, given that it's in China's interest to keep maintain peace and stability across the Taiwan Strait as well, other than economic sanctions, what other, what's the worst thing that could happen to Taiwan really? What's the worst thing that could happen to Taiwan? What's the worst thing that China could do to Taiwan, apart from economic sanctions? Well, they can do also economic you know, inducement to, you know, utilize uh, all business people to, you know, uh, contain our government, to pressure our government. So there is one possible way. You know, actually, before the CCP and the, and the Major's meeting, I saw a lot of uh, organization in Taiwan, particularly business, business organization, to show their support for this kind of meeting. So obviously, I think Chinese government has mobilized all these groups to support you know, Chinese policy preferences and oppose or put pressures on a new administration in Taiwan. So economic sanction, economic inducement, diplomatic sanction, and even some kind of military, military rhetoric threat to Taiwan. I don't think you know, China would adopt a concrete military action against Taiwan because this will change uh, the overall policy of China, not only their to policy toward Taiwan, that is they whether they would maintain the current peaceful development approach of China 
or they will change the peaceful development approach of China. This is the overall policy approach. If they uh, adopt military action against Taiwan, they will adjust, they will change their policy approach overall. So I don't think currently they will change the policy approach. But they will, they will, they will utilize every possible means to contain Taiwan. Okay, did we have a final question over on this side? I thought there were, there were two. Oh yeah, okay, the last question at the back. Yeah, actually I got two questions. The first one would be, uh, what, what, what do you think about the um, Taiwanese business model and management in the future? Would they, because um, recently there are more businessmen moving their factory back to the um, Taiwan or Southeast Asia, and one, one is the DVD, I mean, uh, Taiwan is elected and how it's going to change the situation. And the second question is kind of like off topic. I would like to ask, uh, what do you think the relationship, uh, the cost strict relationship is going to change and how it's going to change the re relationship of um, China and Hong Kong as well? Okay, tough question. <laughs> I was invited by Hong Kong and, uh, in July to visit Hong Kong. Or well, maybe I can answer your second question first. You know, Hong Kong also faces similar changes um, compared to uh, Taiwan. You know, uh, economically, China, Chinese people has a lot of competition uh, with Hong Kong, uh, Hong Kong business people. So I think Hong Kong government try to survive the economy uh, under this kind of shadow of Chinese com competition. And uh, also, uh, politically, you know, in 1982, uh, Chinese government reached agreements with uh, British government on the so-called one China, uh, one country, two system formula. But then, um, in 2047, that is about 32 years from now, uh, I think they, this formula will end. So a lot of people in Hong Kong concerned about the future. What would be the next if this experiment has been ended uh, in 2047? So probably Hong Kong's people would be more assertive to advocate so-called democracy or so-called uh, direct election in, in Hong Kong. But then Chinese government has concern about if Hong Kong implement democracy, then they would choose a leader which is not favorable to, to Chinese government. So this creates a lot of uh, competition economically and also politically. So I'm not quite sure what will happen in the future, but at least I see this kind of tension between uh, Hong Kong and mainland China. Secondly, regarding Taiwanese people's uh, migration from China to other countries, whether uh, if Taiwan win the election, whether this uh, situation will uh, uh, change further. I think Taiwanese people face a lot of pressure in China because Chinese economic structure has been changing over time, very rapidly. You know, China tried to upgrade their economy, try to, uh, uh, to reform its economy into a more liberal, more free economy. So Taiwanese people need to also upgrade and also need to reform themselves into a more uh, competitive uh, industries. But so far, I see a lot of uh, Taiwanese people cannot do these things in China. So they need to migrate to other countries, in you know, the Southeast Asian countries, to utilize more labor advantages in Southeast Asian countries. And I don't see Chairman Tsai's possible election will change this kind of dynamics uh, for Taiwanese people. Not because of political reason, but only because of economic reason. But secondly, I think future administration under Chairman Tsai we are advocate more balanced approach for Taiwan's relations with other countries instead of China. Uh, for instance, you know, Taiwan advocates so for the new uh, southward, southward uh, policy, and also Taiwan's policy uh, economic relations with the uh, United States and Japan. So probably he will, she will defer our economic dependence from China to other countries. This also might create some uh, good atmosphere or good environment for Taiwan people to migrate to other countries because you know Taiwan will have more co cooperation uh, with these countries and will provide more networks with these countries. Okay, I think on that note we should finish and move over to the kind of the informal uh, stage of, of our event. Let's give Professor Tom one last time.
answering the uh, informal questions directly, but uh, I think you definitely deserve well, <laughs> <laughs> cheers, okay, cheers, cheers, cheers. Okay.